restart. And the LT, uh, move on the APU, restart. Roger, and work. Pilot Dick Covey now is flipping the three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three APUs. The liquid oxygen replenishing of the LOX tank has been terminated uh, at this point, and the liquid oxygen fill and drain valve is closed. The voice is Hugh Harris. Four minutes, 30 seconds. The are up and running. Copy that. Uh, the auxiliary power units up and running, according to pilot Dick Covey. Uh, video reconfigure heaters. Roger, that's complete. As the tank is prepared for full pressure, and they will now be testing the various systems which are powered by high Coming up on the as four I said, minute, the flight controls uh, and most the important, the engine steering. Yeah, so that's been done. The crew has. We're uh, at that point with a final helium purge of main engines is conducted, and the crew should be told to close visors uh, and breathe pure oxygen any moment now. Let's pick it up. Underway. The orbiter flight control surfaces, such as elevon, speed brakes, and rudders, are now being moved through a three pre-program pattern to verify that they're ready for launch. Yeah, you can see the rudder move. Just begin to see that rudder move just a little in there. And that's when the astronauts really begin to feel things T inside. Keep your eye on the engine seconds. bells now. There's the engine Three bells starting to move. Moved in a pattern to verify their readiness to uh, uh, support the ascent flight control. After going through their paces, the they'll be aligned to, to their start position. Bells, which gives the shuttle the ability to steer while it's flying. Middle of the screen, you can see those tests being run to make sure We're coming up on the three-minute point in the do. count. At T minus two minutes, 55 seconds, the start of the external tank liquid oxygen pressurization will begin. Just very three quickly minutes and counting. To, uh, what you'll be seeing uh, and the uh, about 10 seconds before the, the launch will be a will deluge terminate. of water splashing. The ground launch sequencer has started to retract the gaseous oxygen vent hood or beanie cap on the external tank. The computers will make a final check to ensure the vent arm is fully retracted at the 37 second point. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds in counting. Ground supplies of hydrogen and oxygen for the orbiter fuel cells has been turned off. Discovery is now running on its onboard reactants. The beanie cap is uh, coming off the top of the external tank there, so. Coming up on the two minute point in our countdown. So gentlemen, and for those of you who are in the audience, let's say as little as possible from two minutes down and hope this baby gets up. T minus two minutes and counting. Liquid hydrogen replenish of the external tank has stopped and pressurization to flight level is underway. The vehicle is now isolated from all ground propellant and fluid loading, loading equipment. Roger, that's complete. TLS is code for ETLH2 pressurization. T minus 90 seconds and counting. Less than two minutes away from the launch of STS-26 and its crew of five. And we have heard that the clock will hold at 31 seconds. STDSD, it's a cabin pressure rated tank. Okay, coming. We are anticipating the clock will hold at T minus 31 seconds due to a failure. We have not heard what that is yet. going down. Probably Not good news. They're going to stop it at uh, okay, well, 31 seconds. Jeff? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, the words I heard were a cabin pressure rate of change. 50 seconds and counting. We're going to clear and what the does that mean? Well, I want to hear if that has anything to do with the uh, fact that the crew had just put down their visors. That gives an extra spurt of oxygen into the cabin. It's something they've done before, but I think we have to stand by. Not stopping the clock. Not stopping the clock, so 34 seconds to go. That my guess of what happened. 31 seconds. <laughs> We have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's four okay. redundant computers have assumed. T minus 23 seconds and counting. The SRB nozzle profile. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We're go for a main engine start. Seven, six, start. Three, two, one. Zero and liftoff. Liftoff. 
Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Roger roll, Discovery. Crew confirms roll program. Houston now controlling. Three inches at 104 percent. The engines begin to throttle back up at about 59 seconds. Right. Mark one minute, velocity 2300 feet per second, altitude 5.9 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Discovery, go at throttle up. Discovery given a go at throttle up, three engines at 104 percent, velocity 3,200 feet per second, altitude 10.8 nautical miles, downrange distance 8 nautical miles. About 25 seconds from solid rocket booster separation. One minute, 45 seconds, three engines at 104 percent. Velocity 4,800 feet per second, altitude 20 nautical miles, downrange distance 19 nautical miles. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. These are the solid rocket boosters dropping away as they are supposed to do. Solid rocket boosters have separated. Two minutes, right. 20 seconds. Three Shuttle is past 150,000 feet up and more. 5,600 feet per second velocity, 31.8 nautical miles. Altitude, downrange distance, 38 nautical miles. The crews experience an acceleration of about 1G at this point. Prior to SRB separation, they were three about Three APUs still running at normal speed. Three good fuel cells. Still have that huge external tank, which will go with them all the way to uh, drop at this time 600 miles from Hawaii. The ride is now extremely smooth. We'll be hearing some call-ups here shortly from the Capcom about the capability to reach transatlantic sites. Riding the solids is like being Velocity inside a train ride. 200 feet per second, altitude 41 nautical miles, downrange distance 60 nautical miles. Well, as Discovery begins to fade out of view from even our television cameras, up there and out there, Everything looks and sounds, Jeff Hoffman, to be working extremely well. But remember, it's not over until it's over. So we got uh, five minutes still to get up into space, and we've got to stand by. I guess we have some animation. Discovery, two engine Maroon. That means if they lose a. S that call up indicating that Discovery may, may be able to uh, achieve a transatlantic abort at Maroon if that were to become necessary. Return status and mission control positions all report go. This is animation that you're seeing here. Since Discovery is out of sight now, what they're talking about is if it should become necessary, this is standard procedure, they'd put it down uh, at an emergency landing site in Spain. No indication, no indication of any difficulty. But these are the critical moments. Uh, having shed its solid rocket boosters at about 150,000 feet, or maybe slightly Discovery, above that, negative return. the shuttle, the orbiter is still attached negative to the liquid attack. fuel tank, still riding with that liquid now, fuel tank as it goes hundreds of miles uh, up. They can uh, no longer return to the Cape, even if they're Four minutes, an 20 seconds, velocity 8,700 feet per second, have, altitude 59 nautical miles, downrange distance 148 nautical miles. We had one shuttle flight where we lost a single engine. Uh, our flights are designed so we can lose a single engine at any time and still recover the shuttle and the crew safely. Now, it's uh, four minutes and 40 seconds since the liftoff. Everything looks good. The next thing to look for will be at about the seven and a half minute mark when the engines Standing begin to throttle back to, to avoid ATO shuttle approaching to ATO, a three Gs, a gravitational pull, which the equipment could not tolerate. 
If they lose an engine, they can make it to orbit. could reach an right abort now. to orbit on two so engines if that were to become be necessary. Make it to orbit now. All right, the good news, they can make it to orbit. Five Even if they were to lose an engine, a single engine, a single engine, one single engine, they could Altitude, make it into orbit. 65.7 nautical miles, downrange distance 203 nautical miles. We're about three and a half minutes away from a next real crucial movement, and that is Standing with the main four, engine cutoff, which will come at about uh, eight minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. At that point, they're in orbit. And Bruce, people are, uh, excuse me, Jeff, for one moment, people sometimes are confused. You're looking at our animation, and we give you the next event, uh, the mo next most important thing, main engine cutoff, that's the MECO. Main engine cutoff at 8.31. Shuttle begins to prepare for external tank separation at that point. The speed uh, in miles per hour, uh, you can see time from liftoff is uh, 5.41. But, Bruce, you see the orbiter is riding uh, upside down. People sometimes say, well, their animation got off. Not true. This is the way the orbiter is riding at the moment. 